guys welcome back to another m creator tutorial today what we're going to be looking at is operations operators and uh how to use them so there are a few different locations for to find the operators now what basically operators do is allow you to compare a couple things and get a value and see if it's true so a lot of them are used quite often in my procedures I've constantly got questions how to find the AND and OR blocks, so I will be covering all that in today's video. Um, most of them are found under, I believe, Logic, where you can find pretty much every one of them. Uh, there's a few other extra blocks in here that aren't operators, but uh, you have uh, the same as block state. This might be part of the plugin that I have, but uh, it should be introduced pretty soon. Uh, what this will do is it will allow you to test the block state of um, certain blocks and stuff like that. Uh, you can do <clears throat> um, the same as block, which is basically what it was before was just an equal sign here. And what you can do is compare a block or a coordinate of a block with a, another block location. We'll cover that in a little bit. This is an item operator. So the, the kind of a pinky red color is like for items. Uh, you can compare two items together. Uh, this one is basically worlds. So basically you can compare if the world is the same or not, or if it has certain values. Uh, this is direction. So you can compare the directions and stuff. Uh, this one is, I believe, entities. So basically if you want to compare two entities together, you can compare them together. Uh, this one is strings. So basically any text you want to compare, you can compare it with this one. And then you have these two blocks right here. Now, these ones are a little bit different as you can click on the equal sign and it will display a few other options. But uh, basically, this one's for numbers and this one's for logic, things like true or false. Uh, this one's obviously for numbers. So let's take a look at the top one first. Uh, if you click on the equal sign, you can actually get a few different operations. So... <clears throat> Uh, the first one is the general equal sign. This will compare if the two blocks or two conditions are equal to each other. The one with the cross down in the middle, this one right here, is uh, basically will test if they're not equal to each other. The AND is basically going to test uh, multiple things. So usually these are in conjunction of testing uh, one or more operations. Uh, most commonly you will need these to... Uh, basically run extra script like testing for additional blocks. So if we go back to logic, we could test for a couple of things at different locations. So if this is true and this is true, then run the procedure. Uh, or is basically going to test one or the other. Um, it's always going to be running the top one first. So if it is basically... Um, in a list like this then what's going to happen is it's going to test for this condition first and then it's going to test for this one and if those two fail then what it's going to do is it's going to test for the next one down below now if all of these fail then it won't actually run the procedure but it will run it in that particular order it'll go one okay that failed two okay that failed three and if this one failed then it won't do anything but if one of those along that line actually does run true then it will actually run the procedure all right and then there's the last one which is xor so this is a little bit easier to test uh kind of show with um two things so basically it's a little bit different it's computer kind of like computer science so basically what happens is if both of these value values are true it will return zero so it will basically return false uh, if one of these values is true then it will return true um, if both of these values are true or false it will still return zero so it won't return anything it'll just be false so one of these values will have to be true and the rest will have to be not true uh, in certain conditions, um, it will be useful for certain things, but um, it's not that commonly used, but um, it's still a useful thing to actually do. 
All right, and then we have the number operations. Now, I don't know all of the actual blocks for these. There's, oh, actually, no, these ones I do. It's the ones in the math operator that I don't. Uh, all right, so there's, again, you have the different um, options for numbers and stuff like that. So you can put your number value in here. You can put your number value. You can put variables in these, and that would still work. So... Uh, again, clicking on the equal sign, uh, you have equal to. Same idea as the logic. It will test if it's equal to the same number. Uh, the one below with a cross out, again, is not equal to. This one is basically greater than. So anything that's pointing to the left-hand side equals greater than. Another rule of thumb is um, any basically the direction that... Um, the two points on the other side of it will be the higher value. So for example, um, if you have zero and this one is one, so it's basically going is greater than one. And I think that's how it's done. I'm not sure. That might be less than, I can't remember. Greater than, no, this is greater than, and this is less than, that's right. I, got, I keep getting them confused. But if less than one, so if it's basically zero is less than one, then this would basically return true. And then if it's greater than one, I don't know. I really can't. I suck at math. But uh, I'm pretty sure this is less than. So uh, what it will do is if it, the value is, say, you have a value of one, and you want to test if the value is less than one. So basically, if you have one and one, this won't return true. The reason why is because this is not equal to or less than one. Uh, you would basically need this value right here. And that would basically test if it's equal to or less than one. That's what the little underscore under the greater or less than or greater than sign basically means if it equal to or less than. Now this actually comes in handy when you need to test for multiple values. For example, um, if you wanted to test for a range or something like that and you have multiple conditions, you might have a few different things like this and you want to make sure that they run uh, separately from each other. You might start with uh, zero and then you might go and test if the value is equal to or greater than. And then we'll test for, say, something like zero or we'll test for something like five. And then what we'll do is we'll basically have um, another value down below that will test less than. And then we'll go less than zero point. Uh, five less than um, hold on a sec random value hold on a sec um, okay pretend this is your variable so we're going to test for a variable if it's equal to five equal to zero and less than five that's where I got mixed up so just pretend your variable is there and then we're going to test if it's less than five. So basically what will happen is if the variable number is less than five, but greater than or equal to or greater than zero. So if it's between, let's say, four and um, zero, then it will basically run that one. And then if it is between five and we'll say 10 less than 10 which is also going to be nine so it's not actually going to be 10 it's going to be nine itself because it's less than that value then well technically it's not nine it's zero or nine point nine 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 basically all of those values of nine so that's basically what it would be because it's just that one less value of 10 so um, if, if you put 10 in it's going to be just one fraction below that so even in point form so keep that in mind 
is 10 would actually be like 9.99. Um, it's just the way that it works. Again, five up above would be 4.99 and it would any, anything below that. So again, with testing for it, because this is five, it's actually testing for 4.99. And the value down here is testing for equal to or greater than five. So basically what this will do is it'll test for everything between this range and that range, but it'll be seamless compared to if you were testing for the same value and then you're gonna run into conflict because this will actually run first when this should actually be running. So that's why you can use the less than and greater than signs. So that, that's basically those and I believe that's pretty much the last thing for all of those operators. There is one other exception under math, which is this one right here. Uh, this is technically an operator, but it's not in the sense where it actually is used for math. So um, again, if you click on the plus sign, you have all these different options. There's quite a few of them. I don't know all of the uh, ones below this point here actually <laughs> really sucked at math uh, when I was in school. So um, I do know these ones. These are adding, subtracting, multiplication, and division. But the rest of them, I really have no idea what they do. Um, it's My best guess is it's probably has to do with... Um, like scientific calculators and stuff like that. I'm not sure exactly what they do, but um, they might come in useful later on. Uh, mod, on the other hand, I do know what to do with. Uh, if you have, say, a time value for something that repeats and constantly goes up, uh, for example, the Minecraft time, uh, get current world time, this will actually keep counting regardless of if the day starts new again. So uh, on day two at the same time, it'll be uh, 48 hours rather than 24 hours. So you need mod to basically test for this value. So you do basically go world time mod, and then you would set uh, 24,000, which is how many ticks there are in a day and then you would basically do your math operation for that so for example we would replace these variables with the time that we wanted to test for in ticks so for example um we wanted to test between 1 uh the 6 a.m and we'll say uh we'll do that again with another value down here and then we can test for less than or equal to, we could even do equal to, um, say, I don't know, uh, six, uh, nine, we'll go 12. So that would be like, I think 6,000 ticks, possibly, maybe 12, um, 6 a.m. No, it would be, it would be 6,000 because it would go, um, would it be 6,000? can't remember um, it's either 6,000 or 12 or 12,000 but um, basically what it would do is it would test for 6,000 ticks away from that that might be actually nine o'clock so we would need 12 or something like that I don't know <laughs> I really suck at math again but uh, this would basically allow us to test between um, on a 24-hour scale and it will calculate basically break down the value from the 24 or 48 or how many of how many hours in or ticks in game that the, the game has actually run and divide that make it so it's only 24 per round and then it will calculate if it's between those particular values in that particular time so again 24 is how many ticks are in one day so we would be t testing for uh, 6 a.m between something um, probably PM or AM or something like that. But that's basically the mod thing. It's really handy when you're working with time and stuff like that. Other than that, though, I really don't know what the rest of them do. So, uh, like, I don't know what that does or any other ones. I've only recently learned about that one thanks to someone else. So, 
Um, yeah, um, outside of that, uh, that's pretty much all of the operations. I don't think there's any additional ones that I need to cover per se. Um, math, those are the basic ones. Uh, these are uh, pretty much the same as uh, the old blocks that I had. You would basically test for uh, a value and then you would basically go ahead and test for something like a direction and you would basically test if that block at the location is equal to whatever block there and then it would basically go okay these are the same that we can run the procedure uh, you could do the same with all the other ones as well you could do it with the uh, block states the items the directions basic other stuff um, entities Strings. Strings are um, basically just text, so you could test like if one is equal to, I don't know, two, and if that's not true because one is not the same character as two, then it would basically return false, but if one is equal to one, then that would be true. Um, yeah, so hopefully that basically helped you with uh, some of the extra blocks. The only thing that is kind of left to, I just will throw into this video as well. Uh, if you click on the gear icon, when you have an if statement, you can actually make else if statements. And basically what this will allow you to do is test for two, uh, one or multiple conditions. So basically what that will do is it will test um, for your condition here and then you basically test for another condition else statements basically will run only if the other conditions above it won't act don't return true so basically if this basically runs and it doesn't return true then it will test for the next one which will if that one doesn't return true it will basically go to the else statement which is basically the equivalent to having a true or false statement if this is true if this is true, if it's false. So basically that's how it all works. Uh, you can add as many as these as possible, but you keep in mind that the more of these you add, the higher chance of the procedure getting too long. And that's where you might need to use uh, a few other things, but I'll cover those in a different video because there's actually a lot to cover about those t few things because um, the call blocks and the um, return values uh, could be done in their own video for that, but that's for another another day. Uh, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.